find this complete. I guess I start recording. Okay, so uh, the lecture that we will have today, <clears throat> we will um, primarily we will do a simulation today. So we will start using um, Technomatics Process Simulate software uh, that is used for a robotic system design or robotic system um, design and development. Uh, so we will start learning the software. We will try to create a simulation in that. Um, besides, we will go through a few slides um, which will describe that why we use simulation, what are the advantages, and uh, um, and how it is helpful in our robot system design or robot system modeling. So, uh, as before, I I have put this time this um, Honda uh, robot that is named Asimo. It is probably the first um, uh, a serious uh, kind of engineer, serious engineering project of humanoid robot. So, and it was developed by Honda. They were the first in in this kind of research, but they could not um, make it a, a very um, very useful robot. So, it has a lot of glitches, etc. But still, it was a good. Um, a uh, good development in terms of humanoid robots. They wanted to use it uh, in their productions, but it could never make it to, to that level. Um, I don't know if they are still working with this robot or not, but uh, different versions of this robot were introduced in, in after a year 2000. But now um, uh, Tesla has announced um, that they are working on a robot. So let's see how uh, how it looks like. Um, probably in 2023, they will um, they will introduce it. Okay, so yes, so the aim of the lecture for today is that we will try to understand the use of simulations for robot system design and development. We will also see the best practices for simulation modeling and we will create a robot simulation in Technomatics Process Simulate. For now, I assume that none of you has worked with Technomatics Process Simulate before. I know one student, uh, Eduardo, who has been working with this, um, but has any one of you worked with the software before or, or not? I have. So you, you have worked with it? Yeah, for one of the industrial engineering courses, I think, 2600, uh, we used it as part of the course. Okay. Yeah, more ergonomics. Yeah, okay. ergonomics. Okay, and not uh, robot design? No, not robot design at all. Okay. Okay, but, but that's good that you, you have some introduction to the software. <clears throat> so, but we, we will see... Um, We'll see uh, simulating a robot, geometric modeling, process simulate software, different file for, uh, file formats, and what should process simulate ex uh, accepts importing files into simulation environment, process planning, joints and links, and uh, maybe industrial robots configurations as well. Okay, uh, why we use simulation modeling, or is it always necessary to use simulations when you are, are developing a robot system? For example, you are working in a factory or a company and you want to design a robot or develop a robot for some, uh, some automation task. So is it really necessary to develop um, a simulation first and then um, work on the engineering of the project? The answer is no. You, you can directly do um, uh, developing the project or developing the system. Uh, you don't necessarily need to create a simulation. However, um, there, there are some studies that show that if you develop a simulation first, uh, it will create a lot of ease for you in the later stages of, of the project development, and as well as it will reduce the total lead time or the development time of the project. As you, you can see here, if you 
develop the simulation, it seems like that uh, there is a lot of effort in developing the simulation in the early stages of the project. And you feel that why I should do it. And if I know, if I already know a lot about robotics and if I know a lot about how these kind of systems are developed, then maybe I can avoid all this effort and I can start directly start doing uh, or developing the, uh, the system. But, but the problem is that many times you, you find things or the problems in the system in the later stages, which could have been avoided if you could have seen the system beforehand. So this is why there are a lot of studies that show that if you develop the simulation in the beginning, um, you, you have a lot of opportunities to find the errors, the problems that may create uh, challenges for you in the later stages of the project. So it is always a very good idea to use simulations. So it, it is not something really new in, in engineering projects or engineering system design. Simulations have been used um, since many, many years, since decades. Of course, there have been a lot of developments in, in this science or in this um, domain of knowledge. The modern simulations are much more sophisticated and also um, there is a lot of connection being developed between the physical system and the digital or the simulation model, which also has a lot of advantages. So it is a very good idea to develop a simulation in early stages. And once you have validated your design or improved your design or have optimized it, then you move towards um, developing it, ramping up and eventually to production. As I said that uh, as you start working with a simulation model, <clears throat> um, when you, and, and if you consider it uh, on the scale of uh, system development uh, or, or uh, the life cycle of system development, uh, in, you, you can also divide these simulation models based on their accuracy. So maybe in the beginning, you can develop a model with very, very um, rough calculation. So just, just to make a very rough estimate, then you can further refine it to make more accurate calculations. So gradually you can improve the accuracy of your simulation model. The more accuracy you will uh, define in your simulation model, the more time it will take, but also the results will be more accurate. And also here you can see that um, uh, on on um, uh, during the life cycle of the system development or the project development phases, we can see that uh, in the beginning, if you identify the problems or errors in the beginning of the system development, you have the opportunities to um, to improve investment improvement possibilities. And uh, as total investment increases, then you have uh, on uh, as as you move towards more detailed view, uh, the total investment on, on the project increases, and this is more in relation to operational improvement possibilities, and it is about design improvement possibilities. So within design improvement possibilities, you have. Um, a lot of uh, improvement in relation to investment that you can make using simulation. While here you have more um, uh, detailed view and you can relate it with uh, operational data and operational uh, data optimizations. When we talk about simulation, there is a lot of study these days about um, a digital twin, um, which is an advanced form of simulation. So in the past years or in the past decades, we have only been talking about simulations of uh, engineering systems or production systems, but gradually we are not talking about digital twins because these simulation models are becoming more intelligent. They are taking data from the real systems as it is being developed or as it is evolved. And based on that real data, the simulation model become becomes more intelligent, more sophisticated. So they become a twin of each other, the physical system and a digital system. 
And we have made a study um, a couple of years ago, and we also uh, um, concluded that if you want to make your robot systems in factories to be easy to integrate and easy to reconfigure, then maintaining a digital twin is a very uh, good idea. It helps you to make uh, the system more easy to integrate and easy to reconfigure. Easy to integrate and easy to reconfigure. Why is it important that, um, for example, now you are in academics, for now you will do one project or maybe two projects on robotics and that's it. But when you are working in, um, in, in a manufacturing company, maybe Ford or any company, maybe you will be doing many, many uh, robotics projects. There will be several robots at uh, the production floor. Uh, the one question that always remains there that you should, once it is decided that you, you should do this automation or you should integrate this robot, then you should be able to do it as fast as possible. But conventionally, it takes a lot of time to integrate a robot. Um, there are a lot of things or activities that, uh, that come into play in, in the real world. And once you have integrated it in the modern world, designs, product designs change very quickly. Um, there, there are new designs of every product in every few months or in a year or, or even in shorter time. And whenever there is a design change, you may need to um, reconfigure your robot um, to, to accommodate the new designs. And oftentimes this reconfiguration also takes a lot of time. So this reconfiguration and integration is a big challenge for manufacturing companies to be done fastly or quickly. And here the argument is again, that if you are maintaining a simulation model or a digital twin of your robot system, it helps throughout the life cycle of the system in the operational phases as well to, to help you to quickly validate it and redesign it uh, in less time than you could do without having a simulation model or a digital twin. How uh, these simulation model help us in uh, designing a production system or a factory that, um, as I said, that we can do this reconfiguration of the robot. Um, and, and by reconfiguration, I, I, I simply mean that maybe you have a change in the design of, of the product, maybe you have a, some, or maybe some of the items or components in a product. You may need to define new gripper with a robot. Maybe you need to change the layout of the system. And then you need to do, uh, you need to reprogram the robot. So this is, this all can come into reconfiguration. You can do this layout experimentations or uh, <clears throat> layout planning in the simulation. You can also have multi-user VR. This VR thing is also becoming very popular these days uh, that you can experience it before it is implemented. So, so you wear these VR headsets and you really enter into the system, into the virtual system, and you interact with the robots, you interact with other equipment. And this is also very helpful when you, um, when you are training a new worker or a new robot or a new operator with a new robot. <clears throat> so also for this training purposes, it is very useful. And also you can make uh, production related stochastic analysis that how many idle time, how much idle time is there throughout the shift or how much, uh, uh, or how often there is some, some, um, uh, some time where repairing time or maintenance time. So you can make all these estimates as well in the simulation. And as I said, that you can make the cycle times in the simulation. This is very important to estimate the cycle time for robotic tasks. And for each robot that you, you will work with, it will have different um, cycle times based on, on the speeds of its joints, the limits of its joints. Um, so yeah, so, so the cycle time estimation is very important when you are defining, uh, planning a robot for, for some automation tasks. Yes, here uh, you can see this VR thing. Um, 
So you can, if you are wearing a headset and you have created a simulation, for example, in this technomatics process simulate, you can uh, use these VR headsets and you can um, enter into the simulation and you can interact with the robot. Uh, you can define pick and place positions in the VR environment. You can change layout. So all, all these things you can do in the VR environment. One, one thing is for, for the system developer, it is very useful to better experience the thing um, in, the, in, in the VR environment, as well as for, it, it is very helpful for training of the new, of new workers or new operators. So they can already experience it in, in, in the VR environment. And if you have created, sorry, if you have connected your simulation with the real robot, you can transfer these pick and place locations directly to your physical robot as well. So you can do kind of programming directly from the VR environment. Okay, then I will um, quickly talk about these best practices when you do simulation. So when you will do simulation in process simulate, <clears throat> process simulate by default does not have any libraries. So it will be a good idea to create your own libraries. By library, I mean just create folders and in within folders you have maybe a folder where you have different types of robots, a folder where you have different types of grippers, and they are ready to use grippers and ready to use robots. But now we will create the simulation in a few minutes and you will see that once you import a gripper, for example, in, in the simulation, by default, it has no functionality and you need to define everything that from how it takes or how it moves, etc. the same thing for the robot. So once you have defined all these parameters of a gripper or a robot or any other machine or conveyor or a milling machine, et cetera, so it is a good idea to, to save it in and, and create a library of all these equipment. This will continue to help you whenever you have to create any new simulation. So you, you can create these folders or libraries, I am calling them. And then you should follow um, a logical flow. This is, this is not the ideal flow that you should be following when creating a simulation. There can be, um, you can find many um, um, sequences the, uh, for, for creating a simulation, but you, you should have a, um, a, a model for creating the simulation that uh, the or the sequence of creating the simulation so here you can see that you you should have the, the design of concept um, that for which you are creating a simulation you, you can take the example of the project that you are working with um, for for robots uh, system development or design so first you need to create a design of concept and this you can do for example in annex and then you need CAD models <clears throat> of all those objects that you, you are planning to have in your simulation. For example, conveyors or um, robot or gripper or all these things. So you can either create those models or you can find those models online from, uh, from the manufacturers of those equipment. Once you have all this data, you can do layout planning there can be different software for doing this layout planning. You can do is in or do it in NX or NX line designer or solid words or inventor. And for once you have all this uh, information, you can import it into process um, simulate for process verification. And once you have uh, created all this process verification. You can also take this data to plant simulation for statistical simulations and making analysis for uh, for, for production for for longer period of time. For example, for 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 one day or for one month or for one year. So you you can make all these estimates as well. 
So this is an introduction to why we create simulations, um, how they are helpful, what different advantages we can get in, from the simulations. And now we will discuss Technomatics Process Simulate. Uh, the thing is that it is not the only software that can be used for robot system design. You can, there are many software um, in the market that can be used for this purpose. For example, if you are creating a CAD object, there are many softwares. Um, for example, this NX, SolidWorks, Inventor, Catria, Solid Edge. <clears throat> uh, similarly, for robotic systems simulations, there are many software available in the market. For example, RoboDK, uh, Visual Components, um, this process simulate. These are the most popular ones. Yeah, then there is Delmia from Dissolve Systems. And uh, there is one RobCAD. RobCAD, that is a very old software. So uh, there are many software that can do this, this job, but this Technomatics Process Simulate has become very popular due to the functionalities or um, a lot of benefits that it offers. And then you also have to consider um, the market situation and a lot of companies that are working with robots, they are using process simulate. So process simulate is considered the most, um, most popular uh, software among so robot integrators or robot developers. So this is why we are also using this process simulate software. And once you, yes, an introduction to process simulate that it is um, one of the suite, um, is one of the technomatics application suites. Uh, as you may know, uh, as, as uh, uh, two of you mentioned that you have worked with uh, ergonomics. So ergonomics tool is the Jack, which has been made a part of process simulate as well, but it is also available as a, st a standalone software. And then Technomatics also has one, um, uh, one module that is called plant simulation. So there are different modules within Technomatics application suites and um, it enables process verification and detailed process authoring. It provides capabilities to design, analyze, simulate, optimize manufacturing processes from the factory level down, down to lines. It includes following applications, robotic task simulations, human optimization of manual tasks, event-based simulation, and offline programming of robots. We will see later what is event-based simulation, but now we will start with continuous simulation. I hope you know the differences between this continuous simulation and discrete event simulation. So uh, in process simulate, we, could, we do continuous simulations. So continuous simulation where you are uh, studying um, every instance of um, every uh, the change in a system in every instance of time. So continuously you study uh, a system uh, of, of of when you are designing it or when you are developing it. So it is a continuous simulation software, but we can also run it as or uh, event-based simulation, but it is not a discrete event simulation. Uh, we can do discrete event simulations in, in plant simulation. Okay, so first thing um, which is important is that process simulate is not a CAD software. So you cannot do CAD modeling in process simulate. It is, um, it is, primarily a simulation software. You can do some CAD modeling in it, very, very basic kind of maybe some boxes or basic, basic objects you can create in, in process simulate, but it is not primarily a CAD software. So you will need to create CAD objects in some other software and then import those CAD objects into process simulate which uh, formats you can use to import this CAD data. There are different for formats, for example, STP, STL, IGES, um, and other, many other formats. You can find 
a lot of data online as well uh, of um, maybe for conveyor or for a specific machine or for fixture or for gripper, for example, from Shong company, you can find all those grippers that they manufacture uh, from the CAD data from, from their website. And they may have CAD data maybe in STAP format or IGES format or maybe in some other format. But the native format for process simulate is JT. JT format is the one that you will always be working with in process simulate. So this is Jupyter tessellation format. This is this was developed by Siemens, Siemens PLM. Um, and it is a high performance, compact, persistent storage format for product data. And uh, they are used. Um, used for product visualization, collaboration, and data sharing. For data sharing, it is really a nice format. I can show you actually here that once you have a robot in your simulation, basically what information you need to When you are importing some CAD data or uh, for example, robot models or any information into process simulate, you, you need to define or, you, or process simulate need to know um, the color of the objects. So color is one information that should be there uh, or the CAD format that you are using should store this information in, into, in, in, into the file. So color is one thing, then this vertices should also be known to, um, to process simulate. And then this line lengths, this is also one information uh, that uh, process simulate needs to know. And if you want to have all this information, okay, and one more thing that you need to know is um, the, the information about kinematics and joints. So this joint that which joint is connected to which element. Um, so all this information is also needed in process simulate. So as I said that you can use different formats, you can use this step format, for example, step can do all these things, but step will not save the information for the joints. Here you can see that this has information about the joints as well. So it knows all the joints. So, but if you are using cross um, step format, step will not save this information. However, this JT format is the one that can store all this information, JT or co-JT. Uh, and you will always be working with this format. But may, as I said, that you may find information from some websites or you may have some data which is available in this software then you need some software that can open these formats and then can export that information into process simulate. In my experience, the best software that can do this, um, uh, this transfer of in information from one software to process simulate is Annex, which is also a Siemens software. So maybe you can create a um, CAD model in SOLIDWORKS, but then it is a, a very, a, maybe I'm not sure if, if other tools can also do it, but the right way or the best way to do is to first open it in Annex and then export it into Process Simulate. I will show it in a while um, how you can do it.
And then you can have in um, your CAD data in many different um, formats. For example, it can be wireframe modeling as I have just shown you that it can be a wireframe model or it can be a surface model. Surface models have no thickness. It is only the outer surfaces that are created in a in a surface model. So in if you have a surface model, um, you you can't really do this subtraction or union or you you can't apply these kind of operations on CAD models. Also, you cannot perform um, uh, evaluation of its uh, for example its mass properties on surface models. And then there is solid models. But you also have to consider that if you have all the solid models and if you have a big model of maybe of a full factory, then you have a lot of information in your CAD file or simulation file. So it will become very heavy and you will need a very good computer to process it. However, on the other hand, you have surface models, then they are hollow from inside and you don't need and, and the total size of your file will, will remain low. However, if you are working with small files, then, then it is not a problem. It is only if you have a huge files, then it starts becoming a problem. After this, I have placed um, some slides that will help you to how to start working with uh, process simulator. I will not go through these slides one by one, rather I will uh, perform uh, uh, these operations. You will see them, how, they, um, how these things are done. And if you have any problem, you can uh, come to these slides and you can see some of the information that I have placed there. So what I have placed here is about um, creating a simulation study then defining root folder for the simulation, importing data into plant simulation, what is the function of placement manipulator, joints and links, we will discuss it shortly. Robot jog, pose editor, gripper, and yeah, okay, so I start working with process simulate. The thing is that to start working with process simulate. When you will open process simulate, there are different versions uh, of, uh, you will find different versions of process simulate in your computer. Um, but for now we will be working with stand alone version uh, on EM server. So you will not work for team center at the moment. I'm not sure if you uh, you have been working with Team Center or not, but for this study we will, or, or for this course, we will not be using Team Center. So you will work with standalone version. Um, previously, it was called Process Simulate Standalone. Now I think they have changed the name. So you will use this version PS on EMS standalone. So since it is a standalone version, um, you need to define your root folder whenever you are working with process simulate. And the function of root folder is that where you create, as I said, that process simulate is not a CAD modeling software. So it is importing all CAD data into the simulation environment. Therefore, it need to know where it needs to know where you are placing all your CAD information. So for now, I have um, selected this folder. By default, there is some other folder, but I for now I have created this library folder, and now I, I have defined it. So only those objects you will be able to open only those objects that are placed in this root folder. Anything that is placed that is not placed in this root folder, either it will not open, or even if it opens, you will be able to import import very limited information, or or you will be missing a lot of information in your CAD objects. And when you create a new study, it will be new study and I'm not saving it. And it will be raw cat study for now. 
later when we will not today or not in this week maybe later if we continue to work with the software we will see how line simulation study works line simulation study is basically uh, event based simulation but for now we will be working with a robcat study so you create this robcat study and now if i import something into this folder for example from here i have different models and if i try to open it it is telling me that you can only insert components from under the system root so everything that is in the root folder that can be imported imported into um, the simulation environment then the next thing is that um, for now, since we are working with robot models or, or a robot system design, you need to have the CAD models of your robot or, or the robots that you are working with. With most manufacturers, for example, KUKA or Universal Robot or Mitsubishi, so all these companies provide CAD information or CAD data of their robots at their websites. So you can go to their website and download robots that you want to work with. Um, sometimes the, uh, the CAD models will already have the kinematic information into them, or maybe they will not have the kinematic information. And in that case, you will need to define all, all the joints by yourself. Uh, for example, here we can see <clears throat> Okay, this is download center of KUKA robots and It is showing me different results. If I go to filters and I select CAD format, and in the CAD format, it is giving me these formats, parasolid, MX, ROP, CAD, STEP. And if I select process simulate, so now it will show me process simulate files that are already ready to be used in process simulate. So you can see all these uh, different robots. Maybe we can pick one of them.
uh, yes, uh, actually I'm connected through server with, um, connected remotely with another PC. This is, this is why this problem came. Okay. For example, this um, robot I have placed here, and if I try to open it, one of them, so it has given me different models or different variants of within this cyber tech series of Coca robots. And for example, if I try to open this, it is telling me that the type of component is not defined. So first of all, whenever you are finding this kind of equipment, or if you have your own CAD data, you need to define it that it is a robot. How you will do it that you will do or go to this define component type and then select the folder where you have your um, CAD data. Now I have placed the information here and I want to define, for example, this one. I try to open it. Yes, and then I select that this is a robot. Yes. So now it has imported uh, this this robot into the simulation and um, yeah if you right click it you will see that okay is not connected. So when when you are importing CAD data, you you may face different challenges that um, I, I had already used this one, so maybe I use the other one. If it is not connected, then you need to spend time and connect it to, to any component that is not connected to the other, to the rest of the robot, and then you will go to its kinematic information and will connect it there. But since I don't have time for that, but I will show you how, how you can do it. So if I select this robot, for example, um, and I go to kinematic editor, I can see all its joints or elements that are connected to each other. Similarly, for other robot, I can see its kinematic editor, how they are connected. And you can see that all these elements, they have different colors and you can see that which element is it. So blue is this one, green is, uh, that is this thing, so maybe it is hidden somewhere in, in besides this. But you can see that this section, this is not defined in its kinematic editor. So you will also define it in the kinematic editor and then it will also start moving. But for now I am deleting this one and I will use this robot and if I, go for this kinematic editor, I can see how these different um, elements uh, or um, are, are connected with each other. I can also see, and you can also see this information here. And then tool post, tool frame. Okay, now we want to, for example, if, um, 
import some more information, maybe some more, uh, some other component, uh, um, maybe a conveyor. And to import a conveyor into process simulate, how we do it is, I have opened this uh, annex as well. In the annex software, you will open whatever information you want to import. So here I have placed these CAD models. So if, if you try to open it in process simulate, it will not import uh, into process simulate. Maybe in some instances it, it may do it, but uh, you, you may lose some information. So, and also I would like to mention that there can be different ways of importing this CAD geometry into process simulate. And maybe different people are working with different strategies, but the strategy that I have been using or I have been working with where, where you will find or, or you will have um, the least challenges during, during your project is, is this one that, uh, for example, now I want to import the conveyor into process simulate how you will do it that you will create, first you will create a new resource and you will select the resource type Process simulate is intelligent in this way that it knows what resource you are selecting and then it will take it as that resource. So if you take, uh, uh, if you define it as a robot and want to use it as, um, as a conveyor, maybe the geometry looks like as a conveyor, but you will have problems to use it as a conveyor. So you need to define the right or the most appropriate component type or a resource type. So now I'm using a conveyor, okay. So once you have created, created a resource, which is a conveyor in this case, you can rename it as well. You don't necessarily need to use it as a conveyor. So you can renaming, you can do the renaming after you have created it. For now, I will just use it as conveyor and then end modeling. After you can end modeling, then save it into your, somewhere in your root folder. And I am saving it here. Save. So once you have saved it, then you go to Annex, then you go to Export and Export as JT. As I said, that JT is the native format for Process Simulate. And then you need to define that where you want to export this file. And I am defining it that I want to place it, the same file that I have created for process simulate. So I created this conveyor code JT and I will replace this file that process simulate had created. So, and it will ask me that you will, do you want to replace it? And I say, yes. Then if you want to create or uh, save it as assembly and folders as a single file, so there are different types. Basically I don't need assembly for, for this component type and I will save it as a single file. Um, maybe assemblies only and then okay. Once you do this, it has replaced the file that process simulate had created. And now if you, you don't see it, but if you select this conveyor and then again do it as um, define set is as set modeling scope and you will see this uh, conveyor that you have um, exported from annex then you need to place it at the right position and how you do it you use this placement manipulator for this purpose and by using placement manipulator you can 
reorient the object so you can define here is So with with this so, uh, button, I have just displayed the floor. So if you do this, then you don't see the floor. Now you see the floor. You can redefine the floor and so on. Okay. So now you have this um, conveyor as well in the simulation, and then you need to define, for example or you need to import a gripper. I will do the same thing again. You will go to modeling, create new resource. I need to define it as a gripper. If I define it, for example, um, some other thing, clamp or gun or anything else, it is um, this uh, welding gun. Uh, so I need to define it as, as a gripper. So, okay. Now a gripper has been created. I end modeling. It will ask me to where to save it. And I tell it that here I have gripper and PS process simulate. And here I save the gripper. Then I go to annex. And in annex, I Open the CAD model in Annex and I have created a very simple gripper just 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 to show how gripper works. So you will find very sophisticated grippers online. So gripper. This is the file that I created from process simulate. I replaced this file, yes. And now I need assemblies and folder of parts and both, I need information for both parts and assemblies, apply. I don't see the file in process simulate, but while select, gripper is selected or I selected and then I set modeling scope. And now you see that the gripper has been imported. How to move it? Right click it and use this placement manipulator. Okay, then we need to define how this gripper works because for the for, because we found the robot, we were lucky and we found the robot from KUKA website, for example, uh, the, the, the robot that we wanted to use, but there may be cases when you have your own robotic arm or maybe you don't find a CAD model of your robot from online, then you might need to create um, the CAD model of the robot yourself. And in that case, it will not have any information. For example, now if I select this gripper, I go to kinematic editor, there is no information that how the fingers move or how this gripper works. And you have to do it by, by yourself. So this is an important thing uh, to understand how you do it. So I select the gripper, I go to kinematic editor. And first I need to define all the elements that this gripper has. So I create first link and it will ask me to define that what is there in the first link. This is a very simple gripper. And in this case, there is only one object there. 
there can be more than one object that you want to define for um, for the link one. You, you will understand this thing um, in a while. And I go to link two. Here I select this finger, but there are also these rubber pads, um, which also should move when the finger is moving. So I will I will select all these pads as well. So this is um, the second link. Then I need to define the other finger. And in this case, there are these objects that should move all together. So now I have these three objects in my gripper. As I said, there can be very complex grippers, but this is a very simple gripper. So now I need to define how uh, this gripper works. How I do it, for example, this object and this object, I want this finger to move in this direction. So I will create a finger like this. So how just click on this element and then connect it with the other link. And this uh, window will appear and so we need, you may note that this yellow line is showing that how in which direction the finger is will move. Now it will move in this direction, but I want it to move in this direction. So I selected this way from this. This is not a revolute joint eye, but a prismatic. And then uh, it will ask me limit types. Limit types is that how much it, it opens in in one go. I mean, if you open the gripper, how much you know, this uh, gripper opens? So you can define it as variable or constant. I take it as constant for now. And I take it. For example, so this finger is moving up to here. So then I am increasing this limit not fifty yet. Okay, similarly, I define uh, the connection with the other finger and Okay, now if I, now I have both fingers defined, they will move in this direction. It can also be a revolute joint, in which case it will um, move around an axis. So maybe you, you may have a gripper which has um, axial movement around, around the length. So depending on the gripper design. For now, I am using this prismatic joint. But now you can see that each finger is moving in independently. But if you want to make it like if you move, if you move the gripper, both fingers should um, move together. For that purpose, you can select any of the joints and then define joint dependency. 
now you can see, see that it is independent, but instead you make it as a joint function as J2, it is dependent on J2 and apply close. And now if I move it, they will move together. Okay. Um, it will be a very good idea to keep saving your file after every few minutes or because the, sometimes uh, process simulate can crash. I don't know why, um, but since, since I started working with process simulate some years ago, it often happens. And in that case, it is a good idea that you keep saving your files so that you, you don't lose what you have done in, in 15 minutes or half an hour. Okay, after this, we still need to define um, the tool frame of the gripper and the base frame. If you have worked with CAD softwares, any of the CAD softwares, then you can understand these concepts easily. If you have not worked, it may take you some time. Um, so I'm defining the frame that will be connected with the robot. So for now I have selected this frame and then it needs to know Tool Okay, so now um, is the time to connect it with the robot. How you connect it with the robot, if you right click it and you select this mount tool option. And if you go to mount tool, it will ask you that, which tool do you want to attach to this robot? Because in the simulation study, maybe you have many grippers placed in, in a simulation environment. So you need to select that. This is the gripper that I want to attach. And uh, yes, how it should get connected, base frame, apply as I have selected this one. And then I will do some adjustment.
the geometric frame is not at the right position, so but it is okay for now. Then you want to see if it is connected with the robot or not. If you right click the robot and go to robot job and then you can see if it is connected or not. And we can say that, see that it is moving with the robot. Okay, then uh, an important thing is um, pose, pose or poses for the robot or poses for the gripper. If you click the robot and go to modeling pose editor, you can see that there is only one pose for now. And whenever you will double click on home, it will go to this default position. Whenever you are working with the robots, you will always see that there is a default home position for, for your components or, or for your robot. You can define new poses as well. So for now, I am... Oh, this gripper is too big, uh, actually. Um, for example, now I have defined a new pose. So if I go to home, it will be this. If I go to this, this is pose one. You can define as many grip poses as, as you may need. Um, similarly, we can have poses for gripper, for example. Okay, so now we have um, a robot and a gripper that is ready to perform some task. Um, maybe I can quickly place some object here and we can define a pick and place task. Do you have any questions so far? Um, for like the different components that aren't like the grippers and the robots, like the conveyors, would you provide those files to us or should we find them? Um, for, for the work that you will do today, um, definitely you will get these CAD files from me. When you will be working, uh, the, these CAD files, I will upload it in a, after the class act model. So you, it, uh, they will be there, the same files that I am working now. So you can, and also you can download robot files or um, 
from, from the website of the robot manufacturers. Um, for the projects that you are working with um, that I had shared last time, for that CAD files of the components, they um, will be given to you from me. I will provide you the CAD files of the components that, that you have to work with. But the CAD files of the resources, by resources, I mean if you need any fixture or if you need any conveyor in case or, or all, all these resources that you may need, those you, you will need to create by yourself. Or you can ask me, I have some library of a lot of tools, equipment or fixtures, et cetera. You can write to me what object do you need. Maybe I have some something that I can help you, uh, help you with. Otherwise, you will need to create it by yourself. Uh, are you guys familiar with CAD software, SolidWorks or NX, et cetera? Yeah, we are. Yeah, thank you. That's exactly what I wanted to know. Yeah, super. Any other question? When you were doing the joints on the on the gripper, if we were to download that from another from a company, would those oh. already be um, established with the joints, or will we have to? To my best understanding, they will not have this kinematic information in them. Um, they, they will be just CAD objects. You would be able to see all these uh, their elements in your in your simulation file, but they will not have the information about kinematics. So I can provide you some grippers. I have created a library um, by myself, but, but again, you for process simulate, you, you will need to do it by yourself. For robots, you can find these robots that are already defined, but grippers, I have never seen so far. Maybe you can find something. I have never seen it. Okay. Okay, when you want to create an object that you want to play with the robot, then it is not a resource. I mean, in, also in the real world, if, if a robot is manipulating some objects, resources are these things like conveyor or gripper, or if there is fencing around, all these things, these are resources, maybe a machine, but the component that it picks and places, et cetera, they are not resources. So in process simulate, you def define them differently. And here we define them as create new part. And um, I don't go into this detail. This is something related to um, event-based simulation, but just selected part prototype. So now it is the same thing. Um, I end modeling. And here I have created In process simulate, you can define a conveyor as well. I mean, now I have, I have imported the geometry of the conveyor, but I haven't defined, defined the functionality of a conveyor. Um, if you define it as a conveyor, then when you are running the simulation, anything that you place on top of the conveyor, it will start moving in this direction 
based on the speed that you have defined in, in the conveyor parameters. But for now, I will not go into that detail. I will just define its movement manually, that how this component moves. So, um, okay, now we have this um, component placed here. Yes, and uh, then, okay, about the interface, I have discussed other things, but I missed one, a few things. Okay, so this is object tree um, on, on the left side of, uh, of the window. All the objects that you create in process simulator, resources, components, parts, all these things, they appear in this area. All the frames, we haven't created any frames yet, but you can see all this uh, object tree where you find, you, you can find all the components that have been created. Uh, this is object tree, and then there is an operation tree. Yes, operation tree. So far, we haven't created any operation by operation. I mean the tasks in the simulation, for example, robotic tasks, pick and place tasks. So all these tasks, they appear here in the operations tree. And then we have here the sequence editor. Once you have created some operations, you will see that all these operations will appear here and you can um, uh, define the sequence in which sequence those operations should, should happen. And then there is path editor. In the path editor, you optimize the path of your robot. For example, now it will be very simple pick and place, but then you, you refine its, uh, its motions in, in the path editor. We, we will do it now. So now we have this object. Um, whatever object you want to, to play with, I will show you one thing that probably you should always do. Because once you have used the robot to pick and place the component, it will pick the component from here, it will place it at some other place. Um, but then if you reset the simulation, the object will not return to its default position. And to avoid this situation, what you should do is create a dummy operation. So new object flow operation, just okay. And then copy and paste this. So this is a kind of thing which is not, um, a standard thing with process simulate, but after struggling a lot with, uh, with process simulate, I, I defined this technique by myself that just, just copy and paste its default position. So whenever you will run this operation, this object will go to its default position. So you can reset it every time. Okay, then we, um, define another flow operation for this because I want this object to move here. And as
Here you can adjust the speed of the simulation. So I am slowing it down. Okay, so now the object is here, then I will define an operation for the robot for pick and place. So I go to new pick and place operation, gripper is this. Okay, it is giving me an error that gripper is not a gripper. So it is a strange error, but the thing is that gripper, its name is gripper, but so process simulate still needs to know if it is a gripper. So how we do it is, Supposing it um, tool definition is not appearing. We have a problem. I, I don't know why tool definition is not available.
Okay, but you also need to define um, the gripping entities, um, that which are the entities that actually grip the object. So these are the fingers, but uh, for when you run the simulation, if you don't define the entities or you if you define the whole gripper, then even if this ob this component touches the object that need to be picked, it will pick it. But in the real world, um, it is not the case. So we need to define the gripping entities. In this case, I am defining these pads as gripping entities. Okay, and do not check collision with so this one. Okay. And in that case, I need to do it. I need to do it again.
Okay, so all these uh, poses you can create. This is something that you will need to adjust depending on the size of the object that you want to pick and also the gripper. Okay. I'm creating another resource for a quickly container and unlock. You can just randomly select a point because afterwards you can redefine it. Now we have this box flow simulation and then I make this um, operation as a set current operation. No reset and So now I go to path editor.
This frame is not very accurately defined hard. Okay, when you are um, defining a big position, you always have some motions before um, the picking of the component and after picking of the component. So you, you need to define, if, if you have taken, or all of you have taken that training of universal robot, you might have seen that there is some uh, motion before picking the object and then after picking the object. So at location before that how the creeper comes towards the picking location, okay. Location after. Okay, so <laughs> it is it is opening some challenges. I don't know why it is not picking definition.
Okay, then you you will define the paths for for every motion, depending on how on the component that you are working with. Okay, it, it is uh, offering uh, some challenges. I, I will continue to work on it and I will um, upload the video uh, over um, at, at Moodle. So basically that's it. You, you define all the, um, the pick and place paths. And then once you have defined or optimized the path, then, then you delete it from here. And in the sequencer data, you get a more accurate path. We will continue to work on it in, in the next class as well, and we will see what still or what challenges do we still have. But this is the basic sequence of using process simulate. I hope you have got some understanding of um, how, how to use this process simulate. I will come upload all the components that I have worked with it now. I will also try, first I will try to correct this, um, uh, this base frame of the gripper because this is, this is not accurate. And because of that, we can't correctly move or, or, um, or, or jog the robot. So I will upload the components in half an hour at model. You can find these components and then you can uh, work with the simulation the way we have done it today. And once you, you are familiar with it, you can start working on your projects. So do you have any questions? Or anything, um, anything you want to to comment on? Or... I had a question on the project itself. Yeah. Yes. So for the the design of the robot cell layout, uh, do you want that as like a two D drawing or a three D drawing? You mean you know, for for the project that you are working on? Yeah. So part A, the one that's due on Monday. Okay, so for for that, uh, it it should be a simulation. Uh, I mean, th there are two deadlines. Once you make um, a concept, and that concept can be just uh, a word document or a presentation. Uh, so, or, or not a presentation. I mean, a, a PowerPoint slide or a word document. So you you present a concept that how how it can be uh, automated or how the product robotic cell can look like. And then there is another deadline for the simulation. And for that, it, it should be a 3D. So for now, it is the, the necessary thing is only a concept for, for the first deadline. Okay, that answers my question. Okay, so uh, this is all from my side for now. Um, if you don't have any question, you, you can log out. I will upload the components in half an hour. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, I just wanted to tell you something that I thought was pretty cool. I read on LinkedIn that my company, Atlas Copco, is starting to make end effectors for robots, and mm -hmm. they're doing more drilling solutions and things like that and fastenings. And 
then I go into work today and I see uh, in our demo section that we actually have a universal robot out for demo now. And like, oh. it, they just announced it too, that we're starting to work on it. And now they're like bringing things in. I thought it was really cool. Okay, nice. That is nice. Where is this Atlas stuff? Is it uh, somewhere near to the university? Yeah, it's like five minutes away. It's like if you turn, if you do like the little turnaround and then you go down, it's on Cross Creek Parkway. But we're also like our main places in Sweden. And then we're also a bunch of other places. But this is just one of our customer places. But yeah. Okay, that, that's very nice. I, I will be looking forward to know more how, how you people are developing it. You are robot is definitely a, a very nice uh, uh, and, and most popular collaborative robot. Um, it, it was developed at the same university um, where I did my education. So it, it is coming from, from the same, same lab, um, laboratory where we have been working. That would be so cool. Did you get to like see it when it was actually being developed and everything? Or there's models of it, I bet, of a lot of places there. Yeah, yes. Uh, and, and the cool thing is that in Process Simulate, once you have developed the simulation, you can connect your real UR robot with Process Simulate. So you, you can transfer the program directly from Process Simulate. That's really cool. Cool. Yeah. All right, thank you. You're welcome. So one more thing. Um, I'm still a little confused on the, the project part A design of the robot cell. So mm -hmm. it doesn't need to be um, part of the, the technomatic simulation, right? We can just make that outside of, uh, outside of that uh, simulation and like PowerPoint or something? Yes, for, for, for um, deadline A or part, is something I, I don't exactly remember, um, but, but you don't need simulation for the first part. So simulation is only needed in the last part. Okay, yeah, and part B, yeah, the simulation. Okay, I, I, I will clarify it more later today in the email. So I will write an email and make it more clear. Okay, thank you. Yeah, but, but I can say one thing that simulation is only needed in the last section. And, and, and if it becomes challenging for the students to do it in, in the given time, then we can, or if we can all agree, we can extend the deadline as well. All right, sounds good. Okay, super. All right, have a good night. Thanks, you too. Bye.